As Family Guy has progressed, Brian has been shown to be much more concerned with finding a romantic connection of some sort. However, he hasn't had the best of luck. In fact, Brian appears to be one of the most unstable partners in the show. Today, we're going to be taking a look at these relationships in an effort to break down the depressing love life of Brian Griffin. Now, where do Brian's issues with his love life begin? The first time he's shown to be preoccupied with the idea of love was in episode 4 of season 2. Appropriately titled, Brian in Love, this story revealed that Brian was infatuated with Lois after a wetting problem landed him in therapy. Brian had decided to end the episode confronting Lois and with the two of them deciding to stay friends, setting the tone that Brian was able to bow up gracefully when rejected. The next time Brian made a connection was with Pearl in Season 3. Pearl had been a shut-in and only dealt with Brian after he was sentenced to community service. Though Pearl had been insufferable and abrasive, Brian quickly warmed up to her after learning about her singing career. The two grew close and Brian was finally able to convince Pearl to leave her home, only for her to immediately be hit by a car. In her final moments, Brian used virtual reality to let them live out the remainder of their lives together, sending Pearl off with the happy image of not being alone. Once again, Brian was painted as romantic but broken-hearted. Unfortunately, Brian wasn't painted in the best light in his next romantic storyline. Season 4 found Brian as a contestant on The Bachelorette. Though he was indifferent for most of this storyline, Brian became attached to Brooke. Again, he made a connection through a love of music and was able to see Brooke as intelligent rather than a woman just looking for fame. When Brooke revealed she had no interest in continuing their relationship, Brian hadn't gracefully left things alone as he would have before. Instead, he took to stalking Brooke, filling up her answering machine and standing in her yard to play her music even though she was threatening to call the police on him. Things went further downhill in Season 5 when the character Gillian was introduced. Brian had been shown to be ashamed of dating her since, while she was attractive, she had none of the intelligence that he always stated he wanted in a partner. So Brian had taken to hiding his relationship until things blew up in his face. This was also the season that Meg became infatuated with the canine. Brian was still dating Gillian but had been roped into taking Meg to the dance after she wasn't able to get a date on her own. While Brian had tried to turn Meg down several times through the episode, he had been the one to initiate it by making out with Meg while drunk. The only thing we can say in Brian's defense is that he did try handling the situation and attempted to get Lois's help prior to being kidnapped by Meg. The next season in episode 2, Gillian had been encouraged by Peter to give Brian an ultimatum, move in with her? or move on. Though Brian made it clear that he didn't wish to have anything too serious with Gillian, he agreed to move in with her out of spite towards Lois to try and prove he wasn't as shallow as she accused him of being. This of course backfired when Brian lashed out and revealed he was lying about being able to cover his expenses and that he hadn't wanted to live together in the first place. By this point, Brian had completely lost all the charm of the first few seasons though he was clearly in denial about his own shortcomings. Thankfully, Gillian called things off between them and Brian was left dealing with being single once again. It was a welcome relief and not only because of how he lied in this episode, it was clear by how he stood by when Gillian suffered with an eating disorder that he was more concerned with how she looked than who she was as a person. This grew worse in episode 10 of this season, when Brian once again focused on Lois. Unlike the first time his attraction with her was addressed, this time around, he was much more underhanded and aggressive. Brian openly flirted with Lois even in front of a clueless Peter. When Lois made a comment about being tipsy, Brian lunged at her to make his move. Though he was seen as having a crisis over his actions, he felt justified enough to lash out at Peter for being a bad husband. Though he and Lois made amends, it doesn't excuse his scumminess in this storyline. The next two partners Brian was shown to have showed more of his flawed nature. With his former flame Tracy, the mother of his son Dylan, Brian revealed to Stewie that his response to Tracy being a victim of sexual abuse was to ask if she went all the way. With Carolyn in season 7, Brian was shown to be more interested in trying to show his respect for Carolyn by ignoring all of her signals. It was fine that Brian wanted to try and go slow, but the pace of a relationship has to be agreed on by both partners. In his disregard of this fact, Brian wound up sabotaging his chances. As if that wasn't bad enough, he then tried to break up Carolyn's relationship with Cleveland to get her back. In episode 14 of season 7, Brian was torn between two women. When he found out his old girlfriend Gillian was getting married, Brian was overcome with jealousy. Whilst drinking away his sorrows, he wound up hooking up with Lauren Conrad, who made him infuriated when she proved to be smarter than him. Though Brian had always claimed he was seeking an intelligent partner, he made it painfully clear that he couldn't tolerate being dumber than anyone he dated. Lauren had brushed it off as Brian only lashing out because he still loved Gillian. 
which he did admit to, but we have to admit that we're skeptical. After all, Brian never valued Gillian much, so his declarations of love in the middle of her wedding meant very little. The next partners Brian hooked up with were Rita and Ida, which were both short-lived. With Rita, Brian had ended up with her only because her daughter had blown off their date. When everyone kept pointing out how old Rita was, Brian dealt with it by cheating on her. The most disgusting part of that was when Brian tried to play off being unfaithful by stating it was a good thing as he learned a lesson from it. With Ida, Brian was once again seeking quick gratification as he was riding on a wave of confidence from the conference he attended. In episode 14 of season 9, Teagues for two, Brian was once again all over the place. He began the episode by trying to hook up with a woman named Denise, becoming distraught when she showed no interest in him. Frustrated, Brian decided to take a class from Quagmire and wound up pushing Denise even further away when Quagmire's tactics proved to be detrimental. In an effort to seek revenge against Quagmire, Brian then hunted down Glenn's old flame Cheryl Teagues in order to flaunt their relationship in front of the playboy. Glenn, not looking to be bested, returned the favour by showing up to a date with Gillian and successfully made Brian jealous. For the next few seasons, Brian was shown to be the total opposite of how he was at the beginning of the series. While his initial romances were shown to be unfulfilling when based only on physical attraction, these next arcs expose Brian to be far more concerned about sex than he was any true connection. In The Blind Side, Brian had lied about not being a dog to be with Kate and only held back from sleeping with her so she didn't find out he wasn't a person like her. He lamented when they parted ways and claimed he truly cared about her, but we have to argue that if Brian really did love Kate, he wouldn't have found it so easy to lie to her, whether she was blind or not. In the episode, This Little Piggy, Brian and Stewie fell for the same woman while attending a music festival. Though both had stated they cared about her, Brian was shown to have been lying when Stewie caught on the canine didn't bother learning anything about Cassandra. Later in the beginning of season 14, Brian met Tori while at a car wash and came up with the idea to have an affair under the guise of being a new dog Tori adopted while her husband was away. Later in the episode Scammed Yankees, Brian took his horrible actions a step further when he attempted to groom Meg's friend Patty and trick her into sleeping with him. In The Heartbreak Dog, Brian finally began to steer back towards the character he was towards the beginning of the series, as he began to grow close with Bonnie. This didn't mean that Brian stopped being the secretive and underhanded dog that he was in the stories prior to this one, but it was similar to how he started, falling for the wife of a close friend. Much like Lois, Bonnie felt trapped in her marriage to Joe and so it was easy for her to open up to Brian. Compared to her husband, Brian was more independent and wouldn't need as much of her time or energy, meaning she could be the focus for once. The last episode of season 14 ended with Brian on another quest for love after falling for the woman he spoke to on tech support, Padma. Having fallen for her voice and their long talks, Brian took a leap of faith and travelled to India to be with the woman he thought he was meant to spend the rest of his life with. When he thought he could win Padma's hand in marriage by paying for a dowry, Brian took the plunge and made a fool of himself on one of their local shows. The whole endeavour was a failure, with Brian losing the show and Padma after revealing he knew nothing of their culture. This would be an undertone again in Boy Meets Girl, after Brian found out that Ellie was meant to be bred with whoever won the next dog show. Thinking he was saving Ellie from a horrible circumstance, Brian made an effort to compete and win, only to be unable to do what was needed. Next, in the first two episodes of season 17, centered around the love interest Jess, who Brian hooked up with after she stated she had a bucket list of sexual acts she wanted to complete before dying. When Jess's condition became worse, Brian's need to be a hero made him propose so that Jess could be married before she passed. It was a well enough start to the season and Brian's ego could be excused for the majority of it since it was set that Jess would pass soon. However, when Jess didn't die and the two wound up resenting one another, Brian showed up just how passive aggressive and hateful he could be towards a partner, even trying to burn down the apartment at one point. After the ordeal, Brian spent the remainder of season 17 focusing on himself. First in Con Heiress by trying to swindle money out of a few wealthy widows, and then in Bry Robot by quite literally falling for himself. Brian wouldn't be given a shot at redemption until episode 2 of season 18 in Brydar, when he once again slept with Ida. Unlike the first time they hooked up, Brian proposed the idea of the two of them being together rather than keeping things a one night stand. Though for a portion of the episode he was seen hiding Ida from public view. Brian did eventually come around and was open about their relationship, giving his all. This was much closer to the original Brian we had come to know, with Brian attempting to be romantic and dedicated. This only failed because of Brian's past relationship with Quagmire, who resented the canine and refused to let his mother settle for the mutt. 
In season 19, Brian once again got the chance to be a sort of father figure when he began seeing a woman named Holly and bonded with her young son. However, Holly soon brushed Brian off when she decided to see her ex again, and the story revolved more around Brian losing a chance to be a dad than it did him losing out on a deeper romantic connection with Holly. With his breakups with Ida and Holly, it's no surprise that the most recent love story with Brian wasn't much of a romantic arc at all. Brian had decided to go back to his instant gratification and wound up sleeping with Zlata, Stewie's mail order bride, after the woman began complimenting his writing in faster than the speed of love. On top of all of these larger romantic arcs, Brian was shown to have a lot of insignificant relationships that weren't given much more depth, showing how selfish and short-sighted he is when it comes to trying to create a relationship. Brian went from being dedicated and vulnerable to becoming the jaded and superficial canine we know today. What do you think was the most depressing relationship Brian ever had? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, feel free to comment whose arc you think we should cover next. We are the screen addicts, addicted to the screen as much as you.